I am Zor. Welcome to Unisor Education. Today's topic will be functions. Um, there are different definitions, um, certain um, uh, principles which I would like to explain today very briefly, because it's really very, very complex subject. Um, okay, what is a function? Um, Philosophically, generally speaking, function is certain dependency between something and something. So, to be a little bit more precise, um, let's imagine that you have two sets, uh, absolutely abstract sets, one set, one set, and another set. We will call this one domain, and this one we will call Codomain. Let's imagine that you have certain rule which, given an element, any element from the domain set, you will be able, by applying this rule, come to a certain element of a codomain set. Well, basically, this is the definition of a function, functional dependency. So this is a definition of a function which is defined defined on a set of elements which we call domain, and it takes um, the values uh, in the set which we call codomain. Not necessarily all the values will fill up completely the codomain, so maybe all the images of uh, elements of the domain will actually be a subset of the codomain set, in which case we will call this subset of all the images of the elements of the domain, we usually call it a range. So the function, if we want to define it a little bit more precisely, um, should be defined as the combination of one set, which we, which we call domain, from which we will take the elements uh, which are called arguments, arguments. So these are elements of the domain which we call arguments. And then we have to have another set which we will call codomain. And then we have a rule which um, allows us for any element from the domain, from for, for any argument, to be able to find the corresponding value, this is called a value, an element in the codomain. And a range is a set of all the different values which this particular function, which we can call I don't know, f, whatever, um, which this particular function can, can, can take. So this is not really very mathematically rigorous definition, but still kind of an explanation which allows to uh, understand what the function actually is. Um, usually in school people are talking about functions which are uh, defined on uh, the uh, set of all the numbers. So the main is usually the numbers. And uh, the values, the codomain, uh, is also usually the numbers. But in theory, function can be any. Uh, let me give you just a, a very simple example. Um, you go to a forest and you see flowers. Every flower has a color. Well, what is the function in this particular case? The main is a set of all flowers. And the codomain is a set of all colors. Well, obviously, not necessarily um, the color of all the flowers you see somewhere in, in, in the forest or wherever you go would fill up completely all the spectrum of all the colors. 
so the range can be a little bit smaller. For instance, you see only red um, flowers, then the range will be all the uh, variations of red, um, and, and, and the blue ones were not, are, are not really in the range. So the codomain is actually all the colors, like blue and, and red and yellow and whatever, but the range is actually only different shades of red. For instance, I mean, it can be different. Okay, what other functions can be defined in this particular set? Well, uh, we can have a different function which is defined in the same domain, which means elements of this domain, flowers, will still be arguments, uh, but the function itself will be, let's say, um, a size of, uh, of a flower, whatever the size might be. I mean, bigger, smaller, uh, measured in millimeters, centimeters, inches, doesn't matter. So, in this case, again, the domain is a set of flowers. And um, what is our codomain? Well, that's basically all the different numbers. Um, if you measure in, let's say, centimeters, then from tiny flowers of uh, uh, fractions of centimeters to maybe gigantic flowers, I think the biggest flower can be like at a meter, uh, I don't know, two meters, no more than that, probably. So this will be the range. So the codomain will be all the numbers, but the range, all the real sizes which flowers can really have, is definitely um, smaller than this. Let's say it's numbers from, from zero to 200 centimeters. Um, there are actually some other functions which might be defined on the set of flowers, like shape of leaves. Um, I don't know what kind of shapes can be, but all the different kinds of shapes can definitely be defined here. And um, where this flower is growing, for instance, the continent, or the temperature this flower is usually um, uh, comfortable with. So there are many different characteristics which we can uh, talk about uh, as functional dependencies between the flower and something. And now we are approaching a very interesting point. Um, if I will tell you only that the color of a flower is, let's say, red, does it define the flower itself? No, there are many different flowers which are red. Okay, what if I will tell you, okay, the color is red and the size is such and such, and the shape of leaves is such and such, and the temperature and the continent and the form of uh, roots and whatever other different components I can talk about. Each one of them is a separate function. This is one function, this is another function, this is a third function, etc. All the different characteristics, each one of them representing a function defined on the set of flowers. Does it really define completely what was there? Well, as you see, we have to really go from value to the argument of the function, or maybe value of many different functions defined on the same argument, and try to determine what was the argument which produced these values. So basically, as you see, we have a different concept here. We have a concept of inverse function. So what is this? Again, if you have certain domain, these are elements, and you have certain codomain, these are elements, and you have some kind of correspondence, from each element you go and you find the value of this argument among the different elements of the codomain. If you can define absolutely uh, deterministically Knowing the value, you can actually go back and find the argument. Well, what is this? This is another function, actually, which has codomain as an argument and domain as the value. So one function is defined from here to there. This is argument. This is value. And another function is from the value back to the argument. Is it always possible to find this other function, which, we, which is called, by the way, inverse? 
Well, not necessarily. If I have something like I just have drawn here, then yes, it's obvious that for each element of the codomain, I can find by following this line backwards, I can find what the argument was, and that would be the value of the inverse function. But what if situation is like this? What if the same um, element of the codomain, the same value, um, can be derived by applying the function to two different elements of the domain? In our example with the flower, what if there are two different flowers which have exactly the same color? As you see, color does not define flower completely. Okay, so inverse function is not always uh, defined properly. Or, I mean, it's not defined at all in certain, in, in certain cases. But in some cases, it is actually defined. Um, obviously, in uh, uh, school mathematics, we usually deal with functions which are um, which, which have domain uh, and numeric, or all the different numbers, and the codomain and range of the function, always the numbers. And among these numerical functions, there are many which really have something like one-to-one -one correspondence between the arguments and the values, so you can always go backwards from the value back to the function to find what was exactly the inverse function. Well, a typical example um, uh, is if function is described as a formula um, when this is an argument and this is the value and we have to just uh, multiply the argument by itself three times to the power of three, then obviously there is an inverse function um, which basically does the same thing. If you take number two, this function converts two to eight. And this function converts 8 back to 2. All right? So maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead. Um, I didn't really talk about powers and uh, roots, etc. But in, in general, I, I'm sure people who, who went through normal um, uh, school mathematics know what I'm talking about here. So in this particular case, function y equals x to the third degree uh, is reversible or inversible. It has an inverse function, and this is the one. But let's consider a different function. What if I will have a square here? This is a typical example of a case like this. Because as you understand, 2 goes to 4, and minus 2 square also is 4. There is no such thing as a function which will convert one number 4 into 2, 2 and minus 2. Well, conditionally, you can say something like y is equal to plus minus uh, square root, root, root of x. But um, this is not a function. <laughs> These are actually two functions. One function which returns the positive number and another returns the negative number. So this is just a conditional um, uh, expression. It's not really the function itself. Okay, so as you see, functions can be inversible or reversible, but inverse function does exist, and that might not be the case. Now, let's consider again a function which is described um, on, in, in this particular picture, um, and we will introduce two new um, concepts. The concept of restriction and expansion, or extension. Um, now, what is a restriction and extension? Um, it's actually a very simple thing. Let's consider you have a function which represented exactly by this picture. So there are four different um, elements in the domain, and no more, just these four. And you have three different elements which actually constitute the codomain. Um, now, if the function is defined like this, that's our initial function. 
Now, let me define a different function. Function which is basically derived from this one by restricting the arguments only to a subset of the domain. So the function now, a new function, is defined on a subset of the domain. And obviously the values will be also members of the codomain, elements of the codomain, but it will be probably a smaller range. All right, so this is a restriction. So we restrict it. We restrict our function to a subset of the uh, uh, of a domain. So a new function. Now, why is it a new function? Because we have a completely different domain and completely different core domain. Because the subset now of the original domain, which is a different set, um, is a a domain of a new function. So if it has a new domain, it's a new function. But this new function definitely is related to the original because the domain is a subset. Now, what if we have the other way around? So instead of restricting our function to a subset of a domain, let's assume that initially we have only the function which is defined on this subset and the values are here, if it's defined initially, original function. And now we have complemented this function, we have expanded it, we expand. We expand the function towards a bigger uh, domain. So if function was defined here, and these are the values, but now we are considering a new function which is defined in a bigger set, which is a superset of our original set. And obviously, a new um, range will be a superset of our original range. Now, this function is called extension. Just the terminology, no big deal actually about it. All right, what else about the functions? Um, quite frankly, if function is not numerical, which most of uh, functions uh, which we are studying in mathematics um, are. If function is not numerical, there's not really too much we can talk about. It's more like philosophy and, uh, and, and other um, subjects. In mathematics, we usually are studying numerical functions, functions which are defined somewhere among the numbers and take value among the numbers. So, um, what are um, the ways we can represent this numerical function? Well, actually, there are many different ways, and one of them I have already just uh, exemplified, like y equals x squared or something like this. This is the formula. So one thing is to represent numerical function. Is formula. Here is an interesting point. Formula is um, uh, something which allows to describe the function quite generally, actually. If you have a formula y equals to x squared, well, does it define the function? Uh, well, yes and no. In general, we can say yes because. Well, just take any number, square it, and you will get another number. So from argument, you get to the value of this function using certain rules of uh, uh, algebra. Um, more precisely, you really have to uh, talk about domain and, and, and codomain, or range of the function. Um, what can be squared? If I will tell you that, let's consider the function which is defined only on a set of um, natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So if domain is natural numbers, what will be the range? Well, range also will be natural numbers, but all of them? No, not all of them. Obviously, the range is uh, something like 1, uh, 4, 9, uh, 16, etc. squares. So if you have domain, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., 
then your range will be 1, 4, 9, 16, etc. So, basically you have to specify not only the formula, but also what's the domain. Um, range is not really necessary to specify because you can always find out what's the range by substituting these numbers into the formula. Um, so, this function, which is defined on a set of uh, uh, natural numbers, is different from the function which is described by the same formula, but which is defined on a set of, let's say, rational numbers. Uh, why? Because it's a different domain. If it's a different domain, it's a different function. Function is the combination of three things. The domain, the codomain, and the rule which corresponds a domain point or element to the, uh, to the codomain. However, we usually omit this type of um, discussion in, in our everyday mathematical uh, life because it's probably not really very important and not very interesting. Formula is really sufficient because you can always think about the function which is defined only on numerical, but only on natural numbers um, as uh, a restriction, which means defined on a smaller subset of another function, which is defined on a set of rational numbers. And that, in turn, is a restriction of another function, which is expressed by the same formula, where the main is the set of all, all, all real numbers. And if you're really sophisticated and you know what the complex numbers are, you can always say that the function defined by this formula on a domain of real numbers is a restriction of another function, which is exactly the same, expressed by the same formula, but um, defined on a set of complex numbers. Every new function which we are said, which we are talking about, is an expansion of the previous one. So we can always say, okay, this function is defined in the biggest domain we can possibly can, and uh, in in reality, it's either complex numbers or if you're okay with real numbers, that, then that's the real numbers, which is the biggest possible domain people really are interested in. So there is no real need to talk about domain itself because it's always a uh, restriction or expansion of, uh, um, of another function, which is basically the same thing, the same formula. So the formula is one thing which we can talk about as a representation of a numerical function. Well, what other forms? Well, obviously, there is a very simple form, a table. You can say that this is the main, this is called the main, and you can say that the main is numbers 1.5, in which case the function is 3. The main can be 4.2, in which the function is minus 2, and element is 7.57, and the value of the main is 0 0.66. Okay, is this a function? Yes, absolutely. The main is a set of three numbers, 1.5, 4.2, and 7.57, and the range which belongs to the codomain of all the different numbers, the range is also only three numbers, which is 3 minus 2 and 0 0.66. Yes, this is also a function. Obviously, the representation of a function in this particular way is definitely restricted, because you can't put like infinite number of arguments uh, uh, getting certain number of uh, uh, values of this function. Uh, however, for certain purely practical um, tasks, this is the only way we can represent the function. Let's assume that you are measuring temperature in uh, the city of New York during 1957. Um, so you will have um, 365 days, and uh, for each day you have certain temperature which you can write as... Uh, um, sorry, as, as a temperature here, and the date itself will be on the left. So here we will have a set of dates, and here we will have a set of temperatures. The function is defined for every day, we have a temperature. 
That's a function. It's represented by uh, by a table. And that, by the way, it's not even a, a numerical function in, in the full sense of this word, because the definition, the domain, is not a number. It's a date. However, the um, the value is uh, a, a number, so it's half of the numerical function, if you wish. The domain is not, and the codomain is, is a number. But anyway, table is a respectable way to define the function, and uh, in practical examples, it's really uh, quite common. Um, let's go back to mathematics from the practical life. Mathematicians don't really mess with practice. They're usually trying to stay within the framework of their theory. OK, what other uh, ways to represent uh, numerical function in this case? Well, you probably have heard about the graph. Graph is also a representation of a functional dependency. Let's talk about certain function, for instance, this function. Well, I'm sure everybody remembers parabola. So this is um, a graphical representation of this function. How can we use this particular graph? Very simply. If you have number one here, you go up perpendicularly and then go to the left and you found one. If you go here two, you go up and then left and you find four. So for every number, if you want to know what's the square of this number, what's the value of this function, you actually find a point on the x-axis, which corresponds to the argument, then go up perpendicularly, go left, and find what's the value on the y-axis. So this is the rule. For every point on the x-axis, which represents a number, obviously, you can find, using this procedure, what's the value of the function, which means the function is defined. That's it. All right, so that's all about the graphical representation, which we will definitely spend a little bit more time some other day <clears throat> just drawing different graphs for different functions. Um, so you have at least these three different representations which uh, mathematicians might use for uh, describing this functional dependency between domain um, and, and codomain, between argument and value. Um, here is another interesting um, way to consider functions, which is um, maybe a little bit uh, higher in the mathematical level um, than usually people learn in school. However, it's a very simple um, uh, concept, so I'll just try to explain it here. So let's say you have a certain domain here, and you have a function which for every argument gives you some kind of value of this function. So this is the main, and this is codomain. All right, great. Now, let's consider a different function. Let's call this function f. Let's consider a different function. For instance, we have another function which has this set, which is a codomain, for the first function f as a domain and then goes further into a different. So this now becomes a domain for function g, and this becomes a domain for it. So from this element of the original domain, well, let's forget about the domains and codomains, let's call it A, B, and C, that would be easier. So there is a function f which is defined as a function from A to B. So every element of A has certain image, certain value in B. And then there is a function G
which further um, makes the correspondence between every element of uh, the, the set B to a set uh, to an element of set C. So, what it actually means is that for every element A which belongs to uh, the set A, I can actually find element B in the set B using the function f, and from this element B using the function g, I can go to an element C. So we are consecutively can apply functions B and then g to an element A to get to the C. What it actually defines is this. Because for every element A, I have an exact rule how to get to uh, a set C, to element C. What's the rule? Well, first you apply function f, and then I will use a plus in the circle as, as a combination. Then as a continuation or a combination with the function f, you should apply, apply function g. Now, if everything, every a, b, and c are, uh, let's say, sets of real numbers, then we can talk about something like this. c is equal to function g applied on the result of function f applied on a. That's what it is. So we take the a, first we use the function f to get to this, but both of them are actually numerical, so everything from number to number, and then use this number as an argument, apply function g to get to, get to the c. Now, this is called uh, uh, the combination of these two functions is called a composition. Um, in theory, um, it, it, it is actually very much uh, close to multiplication. Um, because you're consecutively applying one after another, so you're multiplying one number by another and then by another. Um, so if you consider a set of all the different functions, which are defined, all of them are defined, uh, let's say, on a set of, uh, uh, of real numbers, then you can talk about this multiplication of the functions. Um, it's a little bit... Um, uh, higher concept and it relates to uh, functional analysis, etc., which uh, people are usually learning in colleges. But in theory, you understand that there is something which is a composition of two functions, which really give, gives you another function. Um, so it's kind of an operation between two functions. Two functions can be really operated upon, like two numbers can be multiplied and the third number you will get as a, as a result. Two functions, if they are properly defined, like one of them is uh, uh, having the uh, range where the second one has a domain. If they are properly defined, then you can consider the operation of composition in a way similar to multiplication of numbers. So that's another concept which I wanted to, to talk about. Um, so basically, that completes the uh, general introduction to what functions actually are. And um, what we will do in, in algebra, for instance, that's what people do in algebra. They're learning different functions and uh, how they are really represented by using formulas, graphs, what kind of functions exist, etc. So you can say that maybe the whole algebra as a subject is studying the different functions. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much.